I recently learned about the traditional Japanese art of kumiko, where precisely cut strips of wood are inserted into a larger frame of triangles or squares to form really intricate patterns and even large images where each triangle adds as a sort of pixel. And I don't know about you, but whenever I see an art form that uses some polygon grid as a base, I immediately want to put it onto a 3D mesh as well. So let's just do that. In an empty Houdini scene, I first of all want to drop down a geonote. And to start out with my Kumiko setup, I need two things. I need one Kumiko cell, and then I need a mesh object made of triangles that is going to be my triangle frame, so to speak. Let's start out with the cell. And for this, I want to recreate a traditional cell called Asanoha, which starts out with an equilateral triangle because this is the frame. So the quickest way to get that is to drop down a circle node and to drop the divisions down to three like this. And I also want to turn off the grid. Now I could probably create the cell procedurally, however in this case I found it to be the easiest to go into a sort of destructive modeling route. And for this I'm going to use the topo build node in Houdini. This is usually used for retopology, however we can also use it quite well for our Kumiko cells right here. So let's select this node right here, let's jump into the handles tool. And what I want to make in here are some cuts. So for this I'm going to choose the cut tool up here. And the first cut that I want to make is from this corner here to the middle of this edge right here. And to get the exact middle, I want to turn on edge snap and set the divisions to two. So now I can select this point right here, then select the midpoint down here and finally end with a middle click. And I'm going to do this for each corner of my triangle, leaving me with a shape that looks like this. Now for my cell, I don't want all the edges in the middle, I just want the long ones. So to get rid of the short ones, I'm going to go into the main topo build workspace up here and I'm simply going to select my short edges and hit delete to delete them. And this in the end leaves me with this very nice looking cell right here. And I can also check the point display so that we don't have any say stray points in here on the sides. And this is all looking good. Now to simulate those wooden strips that this is made of, I want to thicken those lines here in the middle and also on the edges. And for this I can jump out of my topo build tool and I can lay down a poly extrude node. Wire this in and in here I want to set an inset of 0.04 and I want to set the divide into individual elements and now you're seeing these wood strips appearing. We still have those large shapes here in the middle and I can get rid of them by disabling output front. And this now really starts looking like the Kumika shape that I want to build here. Now there are still some divisions that are not like the traditional Kumika. These are these divisions here down the middle. So to get rid of them, again, I'm going to use a top of build node for this. I'm going to jump into my handles tool and again, I'm just going to select those long edges in here and simply get rid of them one by one. And now I have a shape that looks like this and this is the Kumiko cell that I want to use in the end. So we're done here. The next thing that I want to do is I want to build my base object that I want to copy this cell onto. And for this, I would just want some blobby shape, basically. And to get a sort of blobby shape, I want to use the cloud tool. So I want to start with the cloud shape from line node. Let's drop this down. This is already giving us some blobs. I just want to tweak it a bit. I want to set the point separation to 0.33. I want to set the density scale to 2.5. And I want to set the particle separation a good bit lower, 0.58. And this is my blobby shape that I want to use in the end. Uh, I think I want to tweak this some more, 0.338. This is the original value that I used. And 0.2518 and 0.857. Yeah, like this a bit better. Now next, I want to turn this into a VDB. And for this, I can use the VDB from Particles node. I want to set the resolution to 0.03. And then I want to just smooth it. I want to smooth it a whole lot. So VDB smooth SDF. And the defaults in here are fine. So finally, we can convert this back to a mesh with a convert VDB node, setting this to polygons. And because I want a triangle mesh in the end, I'm immediately going to remesh it as well. And in here, I want to reduce the target size to 0.1, giving more triangles. 
and then really up the smoothing iterations or the meshing iterations so that our triangles will become more equilateral, like the triangle or like the cell that we created in here. And the only things that I'm really looking for here are that again our triangles are sort of equilateral and that the angle between those triangles are mostly shallow. So I think this is a fine example right here. So now we have one triangle cell and we have a triangle mesh. How can we get this single triangle cell onto each triangle of that mesh right here? And I think whenever we're dealing with something that we want to copy to each face of a mesh, a pattern that we want to stretch onto each face of a mesh, there's one particular feature of any mesh inside any 3D software that we can use. And these are prim UV coordinates. You can think of those as little texture coordinates that are not for the whole mesh, but just for every single face. And they're usually used for some stuff in rendering, but again, in Houdini, we can use them for other stuff as well. I quickly want to visualize them. So to quickly visualize them, I'm going to branch out here from my remesh node, and I'm going to drop down a for each primitive node, or a for each primitive loop. And inside that, I want to use a little point wrangle. And we're going to use vex in this tutorial. However, this will be very little vex. So I think you're going to manage quite well. And what I want to use in here is the so-called XYZ dist function. This is usually used to give us the distance from a certain position to the nearest point on a surface. This also gives us access to those prim UV coordinates. And what I want to do is I want to check on GeoStream 0 for my current point position, so V at P. And I'm not interested in the distance, but I'm interested in those UV coordinates. So to get those, I have to specify two other variables in here, one that I'm going to call prim and one that I'm going to call uvw. And the xyz this function is going to take those attributes and it's going to fill them with the right values. So to make this work, I also have to create those two variables. So let's create one in variable called prim and one vector variable called uvw. We can preview what we've done in here by simply taking our v at uv attribute and setting it equal to a uvw value in here. And as soon as we do so we get those familiar looking uv grids on each primitive and if we jump into the uv viewport we see also how those uv coordinates look and it's basically for all of them those right angle triangles that just span half of our entire uv grid in here so this is how each triangle in a triangle mesh in houdini is represented in the background so to get our single cell this thing right here onto each face we also have to turn it into this right angle triangle and then we can just copy it on to every face just by matching this internal uv coordinate as well so this is exactly what i'm going to do next so to turn our single cell here into this right angle triangle i can actually reuse this wrangle right here i'm just going to copy it and wire in my triangle cell into the first input and my base equilateral triangle into the second input and now on the wrangle there's only a couple of things that i want to change for my xyz test i don't want to look on the same geo stream but on the equilateral triangle geo stream so let's change this to one and i don't want to change the uv coordinates i want to change my p attribute like this and as soon as i write that now a single kumiko cell is also distorted into this right angle triangle now i have it turned into the right shape for uv transform now i have to do a uv transform for this make the parameters a bit smaller and let's move our main mesh over something like this I again want to use a for each primitive node or for each primitive loop. And in here, I want to create another import node because we have two geo streams in here that we want to wire into this. I'm just going to duplicate it like this. And the right one can stay the same. The left one, I want to set the mode, the method to fetch input. So for every iteration that this loop runs on this side right here, it will grab one single face of my mesh in here. And on this input right here, it will always grab the single Kumiko cell that we wire in here. And now to actually build our deformer, I'm using a point wrangle in here. I'm going to wire our inputs in like this. And to make use of the UV coordinates that we created up here, I turn this back into P coordinates for our mesh in here. What I can use in here is the prim uv function and the xyz dist and the prim uv function are pretty much made to be used in tandem. So what I want to do in here is I want to look for a position on GeoStream 1 or an attribute on GeoStream 1. This should be my p attribute, so my position in 3D space. This should be on the current primitive or the current triangle that we're currently processing, so triangle 0. 
And in here, I would normally enter my UVW coordinates, but since we moved in here our P coordinates into the UVW space, I can simply add P in here like this. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking this UVW coordinate from up here and I'm turning it again into a P coordinate in 3D space in the space of the current triangle that we're currently processing. So finally, I can take the output of this Prim UV node and write it back to V at P like this. And now we have a single small Kumiko cell, but as soon as I write this into the for each end and run the whole loop, now we have this single cell copied onto each and every triangle of our base mesh. So now I have a working Kumiko grid. Next, I want to mesh this. So to mesh this, I'm going to do a whole lot of geometry processing. If I drop down an exploded view, we can see that currently all those cells aren't connected. So let's fix this. Let's drop down a fuse node and this fixes our issue here. And then I want to get rid of this connecting line here in the middle between cells, because again, this should be just one little strip of wood and not two sort of glued together. So to do that, the fuse node in here is giving us a very handy point group that we can put out called snap points, which will be all those points that got fused together. Just call it snapped. And I want to take this point group and turn it into an edge group that will group those edges in here. And to do so, I can use a group promote node. I can promote my snapped group from points to edges. And I just want to include edges that actually connect those two snap points. So I want to click this checkbox in here as well. And now these are all the edges that I want to get rid of. To get rid of them, I'm going to drop down a dissolve node or this in and just solve my snapped group like this. And now I have my single strips of wood that I would also use in a Kumiko in the end. Now let's actually make those 3D. If we now test our exploded view, now everything is connected, but actually I want to separate every face in here into a little wood strip on its own. So for this, I'm going to use a primitive split function. And if I disable the name attribute in here and check my exploded view now, now I have a single strips of wood in here and I can make those 3D by using a poly extrude node. And I want to set the distance to something fairly small, in my case, minus 0 0.02. So now this is actually looking 3D. I still have to output the back like this and it's currently inside out. So let's reverse it as well. Now this is fixed and now I can finally work on detailing, which will be some UV textures. So let's drop down a UV texture node for this. And I want to set the texture type to face. So every face gets its own UV coordinates, which is not really that accurate, but accurate enough and fairly easy to do. To make this realistic, I want to drop down a poly bevel node. I want to make a really, really small bevel. So 0 0.0005. I want to leave the shape at round and I want to set the divisions to three. And to fix my shading in here, I want to drop down a normal node and I want to set the weighting method to by face area. So we get flat shading on all our faces, but round shading on the bevels. And I think this this is now looking quite beautiful. And this is our base Kumiko object. Now, of course, one huge part of Kumiko is actually varying the cells that we insert into each triangle in here. And I want to do the same here. So we need some other new Kumiko cells. And for this, we could just again model all of them. And this is what I did. However, this would be too long for a tutorial. So I'm just going to load them in via a file. You can also check the scene file downloads to get this and also the scene in the scene file downloads to see how I got to all those different files. Let's load them in. These are the humico patterns.bgeo.se. And these are just a bunch of patterns overlaid on top of each other. And if we take a look at the geo spreadsheet and jump to primitive level, every single pattern has its own unique name in here. So we can use them to discern what pattern we're going to use in the end. Now this name is fine, but what's a bit easier for us to use here in the end is actual indices, so just single digits. And I can quickly convert this to single digits by using an enumerate sub. And here setting the group type to primitives, setting the piece attribute to name and setting the mode to enumerate pieces. And now every single name also has a unique index, which is exactly what we want. So we can take this and wire this into a point triangle right here instead of the pattern that we built. 
So now all our patterns are put into UV space. And now we just want to have another index attribute right here on our main mesh that tells each cell, each triangle, which cell it should pick from this geostream right here. And to do so, I'm going to make a bit more room in here. And I want to pick those different cells that I'm going to use with a noise. So let's drop down an attribute noise float. The attribute name should be called pattern. It should live on primitive, so every triangle face. I want to leave the amplitude for now at 1, but I do want to enable a remap. And I want to make the remap curve. So let's select both of our handles in here. And let's set the mode to, I think, monotone cubic. Yes, this looks better. On the noise pattern, I want to set the element size to 0.282. And I want to make it not uniform. So let's enable an XYZ scale as well and set the X scale to 0.1 to just have a bit more variation in there. Now to actually preview this, I have to turn it into an actual index value, not a float value. So for this, I'm going to use a short primitive wrangle by this below our attribute noise. And in here, I first of all want to have a slider where I can select the number of patterns. So create an integer variable called NP and set this equal to an integer slider. And let's call this patterns. And I've created a total of six patterns to choose from. So let's enter six in here. The same as I created in here with the enumerate sub like this. And for this, I want to use my noise attribute. So F at pattern. And I want to multiply it by the number of patterns that I have, because this is a value between zero and one. And we have six patterns to choose from. So times and P. Then because I want to have whole numbers going from zero to five, I'm going to floor it. So just round it down. Since this is still a float, I'm just going to convert it into an integer as well. And now we're good to go here. So if you now take a look at the geometry spreadsheet and on primitive level, we have an index and it has a smallest value of zero and a largest value of five. So this is exactly what we want. And then so that we have a quick preview of our noise, I just want to drop down a color node in order to set the class to primitive, the mode to random from attribute. And if I enter my index in here, this is the cell pattern that will later appear after we're done with a for loop. So let's actually cover a for loop and let's make this select the right pattern as well. And what I want to do here is I want to start out with a group expression and I wire in my cell in the first input and my mesh into the second input. And in here, I basically want to create a group that matches the index attribute on this geostream to the index attribute of the current primitive on the current triangle on this geostream. So to just that, I'm going to check if my I add index on my main geostream stream is equal to the index on the other geostream as well. And I can get this by using a prim function, looking on geostream one, looking for an attribute called index. And since we're just dealing with one primitive, one triangle in here, I want to look at an index of zero like this. So now we are just selecting one pattern in here. Let's call the group keep. And then what I want to do is I want to get rid of everything but keep. So let's drop down a blast node. Let's select keep in here as well and select delete non-selected. Wire this into the first input of a point wrangle in here. And now we should be done in here. So let's jump to the end of our loop. And if we zoom in, yeah, we can see that we have different patterns on each cell of our Kumiko grid. And if we now jump way to the end of our setup and wait for all of this to cook, yeah, we now have our finished Kumiko geometry in here. So you can just export this, import this into your favorite rendering application, add some nice wood texturing to it, add some nice lights, and have your end result that you saw in the teaser image. This is it for today. This is Houdini Kumiko. If you want the same prim UV idea explored in a lot more detail, I can highly recommend an earlier tutorial about building a sci-fi panel deformer in Houdini. This will be linked at the end. And if you like us and want to support us, please consider becoming a patron of ours as well. With big thanks going out to all our current patrons, without you this video would not have been made. Cheers guys!